All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good to have you here. Paul Tranny, diving into um, some Photoshop magic. Shall we? Shall we get into some Photoshop magic? Not that uh, Voodoo Val was not just doing Photoshop magic, literally uh, magical stuff. So, um, yeah, I really appreciate her. I uh, appreciate everything that she does and everyone else just hanging out with me on the stream. I'm going to skip this background music. That's I hate that song. <laughs> uh, welcome, Cindy, Noor, um, Jordan, and everyone. Uh, I want to give you a warm welcome. This is our first uh, Photoshop Masterclass, so we know we have the daily challenges, uh, which build off your build off uh, these sort of individual skills. You, you know, it's only 30 minutes long. Um, and uh, here's your chance to, again, put all those skills to work uh, with one project that we make, which is going to be making posters, right? So again, just it's going to be sort of designing uh, based on a subject matter. When I say posters, it could be something that ends up in print. It could also just be a social media post as well, because I consider those very poster-like. But it's taking graphic design fundamentals and using those with images is what it comes down to. So Axel, good to see you as well. And Omar, always uh, good to see some uh, familiar names in chat. So, uh, without further further ado, Cheryl, hello. I uh, always want to know where you're from, too. So, uh, just quick agenda, just so you know what we're doing. Really simple. I know it sounds boring, especially that first bullet point, understanding the objective. Like, what are we trying to do? If you lose that, you've failed as a designer, right? Uh, because I'm asked to, like, sell or bring awareness to something as a designer. That's my goal. If I lose the message, I've lost no matter how cool the design is, right? We're not trying to win design awards. We're, we're trying to like sort of satisfy our clients. Uh, I'm gonna use typography, uh, just so you know, of course, heavy typography, uh, working those in with images. Uh, we're gonna keep in mind like leading the eye and fundamentals of design, and then we'll sort of add an X factor, which will be cool. Um, so let's just go ahead and switch and sh kind of share with you my screen. Uh, Lindsay Palmer, what's up? And Daniel. So um, you can see right in here, all I did is I searched on Behance for posters. And you can see a number of uh, different examples. So when I say posters, it really could mean anything, right? Any sort of graphics. For these, these are literally just like fun posters. I think this says ARC. I'm not given an objective on, on this or anything, so I kind of don't know what their goal is. Uh, which is why we want to start with the goal. But I encourage you to just kind of go out to Behance, get inspired, see what's out there. Uh, I'm picking some pretty graphic ones. These first two are pretty darn similar. Uh, I like these. Check these out really fast. Oh, not that one. Sort of graphics. Oh, wrong, wrong link. Let's go to this one. Sorry about that. Uh, you know, these, this is actually kind of more my style, but integrating, uh, text with images, right, is just gorgeous. And this is a shout out to Andre Larsev's Botanical Graphics. As you can see, it's just like gorgeous. So again, just wanted to point that out and let's get started, shall we? Let me know if you have questions. Um, in fact, I'll kind of switch over. And you can see just kind of some of the work that I've kind of done in the past, right? So you have off to the side, this South by Southwest uh, graphic you could see here. Let's go full screen with that. Full screen, hit F, hit F again, right? South by Southwest, playing with type, integrating that. And this obviously has a more contemporary feel since South by Southwest is all about uh, sort of cutting edge technology, if you will, uh, with more of a sort of a, a design bent to it. So that's why I think this worked as a design. Okay. Reviewing a couple of these. I'm going to do one of these today. Okay. So it's promoting San Francisco a Film Festival, right? And just playing with that type, integrating that with photos. Taking that to the next level, really with this one. Uh, so uh, Julia, hopefully you like this one as well. What's the issue with this one though, Julia? The issue is, quite frankly, is it it doesn't read correctly exactly right. So it says, does it say Francisco San? Because you kind of notice this last. Okay, so that's kind of a failure of this poster. And uh, it's just good to kind of even revisit your own work and say, hey, you know what? This needs 
to be worked on. So I kind of want to take one of these and um, run with it today. Uh, also, just to show you a couple others. Here's a, another one. 30 years, South by Southwest. Yes, we're all turning into like cyborgs. But this is actually using some 3D in Photoshop, right? So I could use Dimension and I can actually use... Um, of Photoshop and add some 3D with it as well. So that's what the, the point of these master classes is to get really in depth with uh, creating graphics and uh, how all of that is done, right? So 3D in Photoshop. Uh, this is a fun one. Again, just taking the idea of a poster and just having a good time. Um, this is done by, just so you know, let's pull up her. I want to, Brooke Simon. Uh, her Instagram is Brooke, B-R-O-O-K-S-I-M-O-N and then underscore. But she kind of did this and I just thought this was really fun, right? Isn't it fun? It's like, hey, you know what? Let's have some fun. This was for a Spartan race and this was a poster that was printed up at the at the finish line for me, which was so sweet, right? So again, uh, very cool, Brooke. That's fantastic. Awesome. Let's close that. Let's close a lot of these because I don't I don't need them. We can reference them later. They're just to get you inspired for what you can do. This is another poster I want to work on. And again, just kind of tackling uh, some of these projects. Let's close these. Maybe we'll keep this one up. We'll close this one, right? They're all going to mean using type. Closing this down. All right, here we go. So let's just say, for instance, I want to go ahead and take this, and uh, I have this image right here, as you can tell. Integrating this image in with some typography is the plan. Thank you, Jennifer and Robert. If you are joining me over on YouTube, hop over to behance.net forward slash live, and uh, would love to see your, your shiny faces, if you will. Uh, over there. So I just got this, I think, off of um, Adobe Stock, right? And now we can start to work on the text. So we have San right here bringing this in. How do we integrate this and how do we manipulate this text? There's two different ways to do it, okay? Uh, first thing I need to do is I might want to kind of play with this a little bit. Thinking through this a little bit. Let's do this. Let's try to drop this, since this was our first read, since we're thinking about reads, what are we gonna read first, secondary, uh, tertiary, if you will. I'm gonna put this sand right here in the middle. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just scale this up a little bit. And uh, actually I could keep it just as it is, because I have all my other letters in here. And uh, I will actually convert this to a smart object, okay? And I'm going to show you the difference between converting something to a smart object and not. You know the difference, but here's an added bonus, right? So if I take this and I say, hey, you know what? Let's go into edit, transform, let's um, warp this. Wait for it. Let's do this. First off, I can't even get to some of the, uh, actually what I want. I wanna get into distort, okay? Notice how that's not even selectable. All right, so if I want, we wanna distort type, what do we do? We convert that to a smart object. Converting it to a smart object, we'll treat it just like any other graphic. It's converted to a smart object, you know that. That's not a masterclass worthy uh, tip, uh, smart object, because you should be using those. But again, if you want to be a master in Photoshop, that's why you're here. Transform, now it's available, okay? So if anytime you see something grayed out, take a look. It's going to be a matter of what your layer is. Is it gonna, Is it a vector layer? Is it a raster layer? Is it a type layer? Okay, so can I, now I can go into distort. Okay, start, take this. Distort means means I can grab these ends and grab them and move them and all that fun stuff, right? Into position just like this. I'm actually kind of free form uh, manipulating this, okay? So just kind of eyeing it, uh, noticing the angle for this particular building. I wanna make sure those are the same. I'm gonna put it right on that street. I'm gonna cover up part of that and I'm gonna have it go down here. As I take a look at this end, making sure this line or more like these windows are lined up as well with that N right there is all I'm doing, all right? All right, let's make sure. 
Everything is good. Got it. You can follow me on Behance, by the way. You could see the finished work on uh, on my Instagram as well. Uh, but this is what I have. I'm going to show you how to do this two different ways. So this is a flat. We're simulating 3D, but then we can actually do 3D in Photoshop as well, right? So we have this angled right. Um, I wanted to show you something else really fast. Let me just let me just take this text and let me just rasterize it just to just to prove a point. Anytime, even if it's rasterized and I go into distort, I'll maybe distort it a different way, distorting, distorting, right? If I don't make this a smart object, by the way, watch, I'll go like that. Oh, and then I realize, hey, you know what? This angle is off a little bit. If I go back into edit, transform, and distort, look what it does with my bounding box. Let me turn off this background or tone it down so you could see it a little better. Look what it does with my bounding box. Oh, I want to go back in and distort it the same way. This is no good to me. This isn't any good. This is like jacks with everything, right? So this is this is kind of an issue uh, because again, this is not a smart object. Watch what happens if I go back into this object happens to be a smart object, which is just a Photoshop file inside of a Photoshop file. And then I'll go into transform and distort and I get, oh, thank you very much. I get all these same controls. It remembers the last position. It knows how to distort this and I can tweak that appropriately. So we wanna use smart objects. Of course, it's gonna protect the original content. If I decide I wanna change this text, I can, right? SF, you get the idea. It protects that content. I can change that content later and it maintains all of these various transforms in here as well. Okay, so with that done, I'm gonna come in here, bring this back up. Uh, yeah, Sarah loves the smart objects are now containers. Useful if changes are needed, you're exactly right. Um, not that I make, and actually here's another reason why I use uh, smart objects, it helps consolidate everything. Let me show you another image just really fast, what it means to be human. So this is all sort of like a lecture series for a college, right? This is what we need to get across. You could see uh, kind of what I was working on here with this. I'm like, okay, let's add these graphics. It can get really crazy. Your layers can get a little nuts, right? So what this allows me to do is take you know, this branch that already has this shading with it, and if I convert it to a smart object, it just makes it one nice little neat little branch unit, and it's more manageable. So that's another reason why I end up doing it. We'll get into this a little later, um, but again, the whole idea of integrating this type. This is gonna be another type study, uh, integrating with images, which hopefully you're interested in, because I'm gonna show you how to do that too. Oh gosh, okay, let's dive into this. Back to our version, zoop. Here we are. What do we do? Select, take down the opacity. There's no secret here. Guess what I'm using, the lasso tool. How long has the lasso tool been in Photoshop? Since version what, 1.1? No, version one. Not even, we didn't have to wait for the point. Right, coming down here and start selecting. You're probably wondering why did you, could you use the quick selection tool or anything else like that? Uh, yes, I could, but quite frankly, I want these clean lines and this is the best way to do it. So here you are in a master class and guess what? We're using the lasso tool. I'm holding down the alt, excuse me, the alt key or option key um, and that gives me those straight lines. Right, you understand how this works, but just to show you that, like, even even the best Photoshop professionals actually use just the fundamentals, like I'm doing right now. And notice how I went around this, by the way. Uh, maybe I'll get to something with a little more character as I'm going down. I could draw around something uh, just by clicking and dragging, and then I could make those unique shapes if I want to, but I'm just building this out just like that. There we go, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. 
Sorry, we're, I'm, I'm really zoomed in here. But all I'm doing is outlining these buildings and making this quick. Boom. Boom. There we are. Made that selection. Um, right? You could see that. This is what I want to mask out. Right? Um, and let's increase this opacity. If I add a mask right now, it's going to mask out what I have selected, right? That's not what I want. And this is what I, what I end up doing a lot is I end up selecting the background, the thing that I want to get rid of. And then all of a sudden when I select it, I'm like, no, no, no. Right? What do I want to do? I want what I selected to be removed, right? So when it comes to this layers panel, right? All I do is I hold down the alt key again or option key. And it says, hey, instead of making this uh, this small area white and the rest black, do the invert of that. So it does the inverse, boop, and that's what I want. Just holding down the Alt key, these are little tips that's gonna help you work faster. Cause what is most of your job as a designer? My job is like cutting out stuff. <laughs> Fantastic, Sarah, you are awesome. You are exactly right. There we have that, there we have that text right in like that, and we can increase uh, the opacity. I'm just going to do one word. I'll just do San Francisco, Cisco, or excuse me, one more word. I'll typically command J to jump. Uh, will duplicate layers, and oftentimes I'll have other layers turned off, like a just-in-case layer, right? Because it doesn't hurt anything to have it available right now. Uh, with that done, moving that over. Uh, Raj, Paul, good to see you. Um, sweet. All right, so we want to do the same thing with this. Guess what? Super easy. Guess what we could do with Command T? Again, more shortcuts for you, you in this master class, you masters out there. Command T will bring up transform. Okay? So rather than going this whole way, edit, ba 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 ba. That's too much time. I'm doing this all the time. Command T bring up sub transform. Hey Paul, you didn't want the direct transform. You wanted distort, right? Or uh, something else. And actually, let me convert this to a smart object first. Command T. You wanted uh, you wanted a uh, distort, didn't you, Paul? You are right. Command T. Right click, and now we have access to. Uh, distort and all that fun stuff, right? So I, these are things I use all the time and I can get moving really fast at this point, right? Boom, distort. What does it allow me to do? Distort these angles. Zoop, zoop. Get it, get it. Cram it right down. Let's have it go. What do you think? Have it go. Oh yeah, definitely. It's going to go right over here. The key with text, anytime you're making a poster or any graphic with text, you don't necessarily, you can cover up the middle letters, but you can't cover up the first or last letter. Like, it's not going to read correctly. You need to establish the first and last letters. And then you get to play all day long with those individual letters. So that's what I'm going to do right here, cramming that in there, fixing the distortion, and I get it. This is not 3D, but I want to show you 3D in... Photoshop here in a little bit. So placing that like so, making sure that angle is correctly correct right there. And then making sure, look right down here. This is so easy. This is easy, by the way, when it comes to buildings, because I have all these angles to kind of compare things to. It gets more tricky if you're ever using uh, or ever doing an organic scene where it's just rolling hills and you're trying to match the perspective. Um, you're going to have to build your own perspective grid at that point, right? Let's do something like that. There we are. Moving that up. So far, so good. Right. Colby, what's up, buddy? How is, have you graduated? I think you graduated from college. Let me know, man. I want to congratulate you. I don't know if that's 100% true or what. Let me know what, what's happening in your world. Sorry about that. There we go. I'm going to show you some pro tips too with some other things. So adding and finishing touches to images too. So right in here, turn that off. Same process, opacity, taking that down. Getting an eye for everything I want to cover up. Like that. Like that. 
listening uh, to our funky music happens to be Nohedia Drowning is the song. Stock music or something. It's actually Chill Hop, I think, records. All right. Let's see how fast we can do this. If this is a master class, how fast can you do this? And I would love to have some Photoshop races with someone. You know how you win a Photoshop race is probably by potentially using a Wacom tablet, but definitely using shortcut keys. Right now, all I'm doing is holding down the option key to give me these straight angles because that's all I need. Right? As I scroll down, boom, boom, boom. You get the idea. Wait for it. I'm going as fast as I can. And again, this is our first master class, sort of making wow graphics, poster graphics for specific events. This is actually for tourism. I know I didn't mention that in the beginning. Shame on me. For tourism to San Francisco. And I have some ideas around that, how we could change the language, right? Because uh, just saying San Francisco, you know, isn't that interesting, but could we change up the language? And could we do that with smart objects? You're right. Because as is mentioned, by the way, uh, by Sarah, you can always change that text later. That's why I'm not too worried about it right now. Right? Just feel it. Feel that designery music. Oh. Okay, let's actually fix this. L look, look what just happened, by the way. Ooh, look at you. Kolb is now president of his Graphic Design Student Association. So that is dope. Congratulations. Um, love, to, love to be there in Orlando. It's been a while. This is what just happened, right? I let go of, I was using Lasso Tool, and I accidentally, like, let up on the mouse. And it closed that off. Not a huge fan of that happening, right? I can try to salvage it, but this is exactly why people use the pen tool. So let's dive into that. Selecting the pen tool, deselecting, this pen tool, this is what I do. I typically create a shape, right? I could create a path, but up here in your options bar, create a shape, right? Uh, right over here, so I'm going to do the same thing, but this time with the pen tool. Pen tool gives me that same. I gotta find where where this where these streets are, by the way. Okay, right in here. This is. There we are. It's right here. Okay, so this is where I need to start this pen tool. Boom, boom. Oh, let's undo the first one. Uh, just kind of clicking, right? We get we get how that works. It starts closing off these spots, right? The reason it does that is, of course, my fill color is set to black. So your fill color is going to obviously be set to a color. Okay, we get that. How can I keep from having this cover up what I'm working on, especially as I get out right over here? This is what I'm talking about, right? I'm going to click up here. Oh, it's kind of covering up. I can't really see what's going on. Well, it's because this fill is, look at how funky it gets, set to right over here, 100%. I want to take this down to zero. Don't worry, uh, Akansha, uh, the text will be visible in a second. I'm just using it as a guide right now. But this is what I do. When I'm using the pen tool, since I'm, things are getting kind of screwy there, I'll take the fill down, and that's what the fill does. It'll take down the fill color, and if I happen to have uh, an effect or something, it won't affect anything else. It just selects or just uh, affects the fill color. So then I can continue on my merry little way as I click down and do all this jazz. Let me turn on San. Ah, I did it again. <laughs> let's let's undo this a couple times. All right, let's go in here. Let's tackle this right now. There we are. Here's my pen tool. Check this out. Um, I actually want to kind of roll this back and show you what issues you might have as I start to work on this, right? Um, 
It's the issue of when you put down points where you didn't need them. So let's just take these out. Uh, P for pen, clicking right here, I'm gonna continue this line. This is where I messed up. I accidentally started putting a, a pin right up there. I'm like, oh no, I didn't mean to put it up there. Before even letting up, by the way, before even letting up on your mouse, you have the ability to, let's get it, pen tool, click, click, Use the space bar. Does everybody see that? And let me take down the opacity here. Pen tool. There it is. Hopefully this is making sense. But if you ever accidentally put a pin down somewhere, you can pick it up by hitting the space bar. So from there, I can go ahead and say, okay, I wanted it down here because I was going up the wrong building, right? And then I can continue on my merry way, right? Okay, let me just do this really fast. And then I want to get into some more things as well because you don't need to see me outline buildings for half an hour, do you? That's why this moves usually pretty quick. Uh... Almost done, almost done, almost done. The thing is I'm dealing with the word uh, Francisco, which is why this is such a long path. Clear down here, boom, 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 boom. You get the idea. I hope I have this right. There we go. Let's add that there. Our complete shape. Here it is. Zoop. There's my complete shape. I'm using this as a mask. What do I want to do now? Anytime you have something as a shape, uh, hold down the command key and all you do is click on it. So holding down the command key, clicking on that shape will turn it into a selection. Uh, with that selection made, I can go to the layer I want to mask, which is my Francisco layer, and add a mask right there. Let's bring up that opacity. Let's actually invert it. And that's along the lines of what I want. There we are, right? You get the idea. Ah, okay. Whew. All right. It's like I'm doing work or something. <laughs> Um, from there, I'm going to add to it really fast, this last little piece. It's like we're doing work. This is a horrible idea. What's this work stuff? Adding to my mask by filling with white. There we go. Done and done. There we are. All right, set up so far so good, right? We could see that. Now check this out. Typically if these are locked, if I move this, that's no good. I unlock these two layers, right? So they're no longer linked together. And then I can move that text around. So if I want to uh, say shift it this way a little bit, I can do that. I'm noticing right in here, I actually want to add to it as well. Give me a second, let's add to this. Just like that. Hiding that text, because it'll just look cooler. Kind of like that, right? And then hiding it, which is gonna be the foreground color, which happens to be black, done. There we go, uh, we have our text in perspective. Uh, how did I inverse selection? Um, <sighs> thank you, you asked, I'm so glad you asked. Hold down the Alt key or Option key when you're making a, or excuse me, no, sorry about that. So if you wanna invert a selection, there's my selection. Command I inverts the colors, Command Shift I will invert the selection, okay? So it's right up here in case you forget inverse is right here, Command-Shift-I. 
right? That's what gives you the inverse right there. Okay, so that looks so far so good. I'm gonna have so much fun with this now. This is, this is headed the right direction. We have some things to work on. So I'm gonna move through this very fast. Yeah, so what does Alt-I do? Now it's not all, at least not on a Mac, it's not Alt-I, it's Command-Shift-I to inverse selections. We're not, still not able to see this text. Thank you, Colby. Um, so we need to go ahead and kind of fake this out some more. So again, since I've unlocked this, I can adjust this text. I can kind of move it over, whatever. You still read it as San Francisco. I get it. I can do the same thing, unlocking that, moving this text down like that. We get the idea. We don't want to move it too much because we'll start messing with the dimensions. But at this point, I can start adding some shadows. So let's just kind of do that right in here for the, let's kind of move that over, for the sand right in here. Zoop. We want to add some shadows. What do we do? We add a layer, right? And this is going to be called shad. Brush. B for brush. Checking out my brush properties right in here. Just a soft round, right? Unlinking, by the way. I couldn't see the um, I couldn't see the brush size. It's because I had caps lock on. If you have a caps lock on, you're not going to see your brush size. I'm going to unlock it. Oh, there's my brush. And now I'm going to ch take this flow down to something really low, right? So 5%. That means I'm just gonna be able to kind of go over this very softly. Let's talk about color as well. We want something to look good, make it pop, make it pop. Um, we don't necessarily wanna use pure black. Look, do you see pure black in here? No, this isn't, this isn't pure black, so why would I be painting with pure black? Hit I, sample that color, B for brush, paint like so. And then I'm just painting on that S. Notice how it's actually painting everywhere, right? I don't want to paint on top of these buildings. What do we do? We're going to go from uh, layer masks to clipping masks. So right over here, I just want this shad to shadow out the word sand. So what do we do? I typically hold down the Alt key or Option key, click, and now it's clipped. So again, before, after, before, after, just affects the, affect the text. And now we can have some fun kind of painting accordingly, right? It's kind of dirty and dusty down here, maybe by the street. We have some shadows there and we're just having some fun painting, creating that depth right there. The closer it is to the building, of course, it's gonna be a little stronger. Kind of thinking about how does, how does real life work, you know? And that's what we're going for here. I'm going to go about for about 30 uh, more minutes. Leo, thank you so much for joining me. Rahadeen as well. Uh, hop on over to behance.net forward slash live. That's what I'm doing now. So you're learning layer masks, how to make those. You should know how to make those, quite frankly. Uh, clipping masks, right? Clipping that for Francisco as well. Painting accordingly, right? With the appropriate color just along these buildings to give it that nice depth, right? It's gonna be these little things that's gonna separate your design, your posters from other people's work, right? It's gonna be these little details. Uh, thanks, Josh. Josh likes the shadows. See, isn't it helping a lot? Just a little, just a little bit. I could always go overboard. Remember, my flow is down at about 5%, okay? Ooh, I could actually... I don't even have this on the street. Look at that. Look at how it gets bent up. <laughs> that was my problem. And again, since we set this up correctly, I can easily correct this, right? Command T. Boom. Shortcut. Guess what? Oh, love it. Right click. Distort. Right? Kind of move this down. Boop. Right into place right there. Oh. Yes, love it, right? Because it set, we set it because we made it a smart object. It's going to keep the distortion angles correct. Melanie, you can watch rewatch this later, uh, assuming you have time. So only you can answer that question. Hey, guess what, everybody? Yeah, I'm using the eraser. Does anybody have a problem with me using the eraser tool? <laughs> It's like, oh, never use the eraser. You know what? The tool's there for a reason. You know, I, I know what I'm doing. B for brush. Anytime somebody gives you absolutes, as you get older as a designer, you, you realize, you know, rules are meant to be broken and there really are no absolutes. Like everything kind of, even Comic Sans, for instance, has a place. 
So I think as young designers, you want these firm definitive rules. And then as you kind of mature as a designer, you realize there's a lot more gray area. And I'm not just talking about shadows. Okay, you get the idea. Oh, love the idea of Godzilla in here. So I have this so far. Um, it's looking pretty good. I can adjust. I want to see, look what I'm doing. Zoop. I can move that around all day long. Love it. Cool. Um, so let's kind of make this pop some more, right? We're going to take this to the next level. What do we do? We want to actually, I can do this a couple different ways. You ready for this? Does he laugh? What? I always laugh. Are you kidding me? Check this out. Um, here, here's a, a couple different things we can do here. So check this out. I want to give this a little bit of depth, right? It's better to convince people of a little bit of the depth than to go more extreme. It's all about, I personally think it's all about subtlety, right? So in this case, I want to add a little bit of depth to this sand, right? We know if we double click on a layer, we get these layer styles and we know we can try bevel and boss. You know how many times I use bevel and boss? Like zero times. That's how many times I've never used it. Um, I could think about, say, like adding a drop shadow, okay? I could take a drop shadow. Let me just change the color, right? Again, this is actually, I don't even know why I'm showing this because this isn't some, I'm kind of showing you uh, maybe, you, you know, what, the, the issues with doing it this way. I can take that drop shadow down to zero for the, for the um, blurriness, if you will, and I can angle it this way and then kind of do a convincing depth like that. That actually might work. That might be that might be one way to get started. The problem with this is that it's um it's a uniform color, right? So I actually we'll do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of do this just to set it up. It's like okay, the angle is good, right? From here to here, that's pretty good. Okay. Um I'm gonna go ahead and make the color a nice sort of neutral brown in the scene like that. Okay, clicking okay. That's just my starting point, right? That's just my starting point. From there, what do I do? Guess what? I don't, I don't want to, um, I don't want it to be a solid color, so I need to turn it into a layer. I'm gonna right click, and we're gonna look for the layer effects. It's been a while since I've done this part. I usually do it a little bit different. Okay, here we go. Uh, Oh, here we go. Rasterize layer style. <laughs> Donna, thank you so much for making me laugh. Yes. Uh, you used Bevel and Boss in the late 90s. That is so funny. Uh, rasterize layer style. Okay, boom. Uh, again, it's been a while since I've done this. Yeah, that's not what I want. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of this shadow. So so rasterize layer style will turn layer styles into a layer so you can manipulate them more. This is exactly what I would do with this, is I duplicate this layer, getting into this, because I don't have a lot of time, taking this, offsetting it a little bit, right? Yeah, I'm going to rasterize this layer, hue, lightness, colorize. I know I'm going kind of fast. Here's back where we were. We get it, right? Taking that color down to something nice and soft. There we are. Boom. There we have it, right? Convi making convincing depth. You ready for this? Another clipping mask with the brush painting in the dark areas right here. Let's crank that up a little bit more. Making it dark, making it dark, making it dark. There's so much I want to show you guys as I think about this. So much I want to show. show. Um, adding even more of a highlight, by the way. Brush tool. Look at what I'm doing. I'm actually painting on a clipping mask that's uh, kind of, yeah, I'm separating the highlights and shadows from my base color is all I'm doing right there. So let's just paint that on like that. These highlights, you get the idea. All right. 
Cool, you get the idea. We have that set up. Let me do this really fast as well. This is, again, for Masterclass. How do we, how do we, since this is called Masterclass, let's like really get into the speed of it all as well. Shall we? As fast as we can. That's right. Boom, there we are. Q. Colorize. Taking that color down. Done. Same thing. All right, let's kind of move on from this. B for brush. I could paint. Paint in the highlights just on the top of the letters and uh, paint in some dark colors down here. So what am I doing here this whole time? I've been simulating 3Ds. Uh, yes, uh, oh, Mehdi, good call. Yes, I did mess up with the pen tool. You're exactly right. And so, so Mehdi, we can get into some more advanced things if you'd like. First off, any this design is pretty straightforward. It honestly is. The, the, the concept is where it gets probably a little bit more tricky, but as you even get into um, more complex designs, you notice you're gonna use the same tools. So you are right. I hope you guys find that comforting, knowing that all I'm doing in here, guess what? There's no tricks to this. There's no fancy, it's gonna be layer masks, it's gonna be clipping masks, things like that. Okay, so that's kind of what it comes down to. So you are exactly right. The, even the more you get into this, the more you realize that it's all about the fundamentals, right? All I'm doing is using a, a brush here. Is there anything advanced about this brush? No, nothing at all. I think what gets to be advanced is where am I placing this, right? The flow, the colors, all those fun things, right? Um, Mehdi, also glad, to open to hear suggestions um, if you are curious about to, you know, what you think an advanced tip would be, right? I think right now what I would like to do with this is start playing with colors and make this pop some more. If you do want to get more advanced, by the way, because this is actually what I was leading up to, uh, is actually taking some text like San, right? We get this. And uh, rather than faking 3D, we could actually turn this into 3D. So uh, again, this is for Mehdi. If he or she wants something more advanced, uh, let's dive into this. New. Uh, tch -tch -tch -tch. Let's open up my 3D panel right over here. 3D extrusion. Okay, so this happens to be, it could be something flat. It could be text. 3D extrusion, click create. Right, what's gonna happen now is it's gonna turn that into 3D text, right? We can see it right here. We even see that ground plane as well. Look at how advanced got this. So, so look at the sand and all of those materials. This is all gonna be white because my text was originally white. Guess what, we have lights as well. So there's a number of things we can do in here. Um, going into properties, let's move this properties panel over because this properties panel becomes really important as well. We have our 3D panel, we need to be mindful of what's selected, right? And look at how everything changes, even my scene, right? There's a thousand things we can do in here, but let's go to the current view. We could say view it from the uh, top if we want to, right? And that's what it looks like at the top. We know this is actually not the top. We need to angle this appropriately. We can angle this into uh, 3D space. We can turn this into perspective, right? Orthographic means sort of flat. Uh, there's no real vanishing point there. Uh, taking this, let's shrink this down. Shoop. Rotating this accordingly with the vanishing point of the bear over here, basically, roughly. Uh, something kind of like that. Okay, and I can always cheat this a little bit. It just depends on the uh, on, on what I'm trying to do because I still want to keep this text legible, right? There's my current view. It's at the right angle. What about my text? Oh, the extrusion depth is a little extreme, right? Let's take that down. Instead of 15, let's go to five, right? Let's take this even smaller, right? Down to like 0.9 or even one pixel, right? 
There we have it. What about the light source? Command H will hide all of that stuff. In fact, let's hide the sand. So there we go, there's the sand. Let's take the infinite, this light source. We could see it right here, Command H, that'll bring it up. And now I can control the, sh the, uh, the light source. So we can have it hit from wherever it's coming from. I actually wanna have more of that splash of color on the text. So I'll kind of angle it right there. Kind of looks like it's coming from that direction. It is, um, it's got a nice ambient light to it as well. Uh, guess what? I don't want the shadow turning off the shadow like that. Command H. There we have it. We have our 3D text, right? So Anna, hopefully that works for you. Uh, Medi, hopefully that is like advanced enough for you. One reason I don't actually talk about um, 3D in Photoshop like that much because there's actually something called, right down here, Adobe Dimension. So we actually have a separate app that does 3D. It doesn't create 3D, but the idea is compositing things together, okay? But that's your 3D text right here. We can see that squared away. Guess what? We know the color actually needs to be a little bit different. Let me take a look. Scene. Changing this, giving it a little bit of a color. <sighs> See, like that, I can tint the whole thing just like a little bit. So this is like the light source, roughly. You can see kind of what I'm doing there. Let's just go with that, that's fine. Pure white, mm, it's okay, right? So there we have that. One is painted, one is 3D. You can decide which one you like. I'm going back in to our original, which happens to be right here, right? Cool, done and done. A couple more things. Um, the, the left end is looking wonky. I don't know if you're talking about the 3D version. You're exactly right. The reason that's happening is because of my, if I go into the properties for the camera, it's gonna be the, 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 uh, the depth of, it's my lens basically. So I would change this lens size, that it changes how distorted that text is. That, you're right, it is a little wonky. So in this case, I could play with this all day long, uh, try to get that exactly right but I'm not gonna worry about that because I wanna move on to other things, right? Because we already have this text looking pretty good to begin with, right? So here we have this, it's it's looking pretty good. Look, let's look at the overall tone of the image. Um, okay, cool. Let me show you another thing, uh, Mehdi, as well. Um, taking things to another level in terms of the tone. Two things I would do here. This is two things I would do. I would just, this needs, this needs more color. It's like, I don't want to go to San Francisco because it looks drab and it's just about to rain. Okay, so I'm going to go into, you know, and just grab some imagery that I hopefully have in here. Add some fun um, lens flares, color splashes. I call them color splashes. I have these bokehs that I can pull in. Right, so I have a nice bokeh that I can pull in. I have this color defocus as well. Because again, if I add a, um, an adjustment layer and I crank up the saturation, this doesn't even look that good either. I'll tell you one thing, I'll, I'll do two things for you. Um, is I, I can do this, I can give this some color punch, right? And this doesn't look that good. How do you wanna unify colors? This is just, again, one, since we're talking about uh, masterclass, I want to actually add a color lookup table. So color lookup is basically like adding a bunch of these rolled into one, nice and neat, with some pretty amazing results. So for the properties panel, I'll change this to two strip look. This might be a look I'm going for. If you notice in this previous version, Here's another version we made earlier. This one, what does the original look like? The original is like that, which is actually not bad. I said, hey, how can we make this look more exciting? Well, adding that lookup table actually goes, changes it from a teal uh, to a uh, pink peach-ish look, right? And that's what the color lookup does. So this is a way to just make these images pop more, okay? 
Um, same thing with this one. Maybe this color lookup isn't working, at least not that one. I would go in and try some of these different ones. I'm gonna let you just kind of have at that, that's fine. I'm gonna turn off hue and saturation. I decided what's gonna be even better for this is adding just uh, some defocus. So I'll do this a lot, and you notice a lot of professionals will add just like, they'll add some sharpness to an image, and then they might add some like colorful lens flares, if you will, or bokehs, right? Uh, so that layer, with that layer selected, I'm gonna change that to like overlay or soft light, one of, or even lighten. Oh, see, see, look at that. Just make it look like a splash of color is in there, right? Moving that off to the side, let's duplicate that again. Let's flip it vertically by Command T, right clip, click, flip vertical something like that, and take that into place just like so, okay? There you sort of, there you have what I'm going for, essentially, which you can see it taking place right in here. If we look at our final, how's that done? It's done with these, right? Same, same goal, okay? I added some hue and saturation. I shifted the color balance as well, and we could see this final version. The nice thing is, I could take those and bring those over to my version that I was working on and see how that looks. Wait for it. There we go. So that's kind of that's kind of what we're going for. San Francisco. I would call this one done. Uh, yes, Anna Bracket Photoshop has LUTs. Uh, that's the whole idea of this is to learn something new. They're called color lookups. You could make your own. You can add your own stack of hue, saturation, color balance, all that fun stuff. And then all you need to do is export LUT, color lookup table, right? It's built in to add consistency across images. And honestly, it came from the video world, you, the production world of having consistency for a film, even though there's different NLEs out there, right? Uh, moving on from there, I kind of wanted to actually show this one. Um, Again, same concept to uh, Mehdi's point, you're right. Even looking at this, this seemingly is, guess what? There's nothing tricky about it. Look, let's take a look in here. Guess what? Layer masks, adjustment layers, okay? These happen to be um, smart objects, right? And this is what we have. How can we make this look better and give it more pop, right? We want to play with the text. I really don't have much time, but this is where I'd come in and start to play with this text, you know, shrink this down, put it there, move it to the back. How to, oh, what's the shortcut? Ah, I'm going to, I'm going to, this is where I'm going <laughs> to, I don't remember the shortcut to move to back. Oh, it's because I had the transform on, but let's just take this, moving that back behind something like that. There you go, right? Adding depth in here by doing a layering effect, right? Taking this, moving it behind the bouquet, for instance. There you go, right? Just playing with this text and adding color to it as well. So that's kind of where I'd end up with this, right? Just getting a burst of color there based on the color of the flowers. Ah, awesome, Anna. So let's do that. Let's add a little bit of a glow. Because uh, I'm getting down to the last couple minutes. I just wanted to make more than one poster, right? So there we go. Adding that glow right there, having that kind of pop a little bit. Turning on those. Kind of like that. There we go. Cool. Same process. I would come in and I would start to um, uh, start to airbrush the same way over those letters as well, right? Uh, if you are wondering how to locate layers, there's about a thousand other tips I want to show you. And it's all about working within um sort of like the current way you work and then adding these little tips like i need to select this text i don't know where it is over here there's 75 layers in here right so what i can do is i can hold on the command key and click and now i've act ooh. now i've actually selected that layer 
and I can hit Command T and kind of make that larger like so and start to play with the, the depth of this, right? Let's zoom out, Command zero. You get the idea. This is the one that I need to work on some more. Um, I'm down to the wire. I'm not sure exactly how much time I have. I could get cut off at any second. I think I have a minute and 30 seconds left, right? But in here, it's the same process. Let's move this over, zoop. Knowing what I can cover and what I can't. B for brush, command, uh, closing bracket, painting with black, taking out, say that part of the two, and maybe doing an overlap right there. Baking that into the design, as you can see right there, adding that new layer, it's the same process. Integrating type with imagery in this case for hopefully like amazing results. Right, that's the hope, right? You get the idea. Cool. Uh, glad you like this, Axel. I just started this. Uh, Carter, thanks so much for joining me as well. I am doing this every week, just so you know. Um, at Command T, we can see a number of these designs that I was uh, working on, uh, just a few of them. I have a shortcut key for tiling images, which actually works out pretty well, typically. Um, but you can see sort of the different posters that were made. And I didn't even get into some other things that I wanted to talk about, but that's why I'm doing this every week. So um, I'll get some of this squared away. I'll post it to Instagram, just so you know. And uh, I just thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'll be kind of picking a new subject each week. Uh, this was all about integrating text in with images. So it was a lot of layer masks, clipping masks, Thanks so much, everyone.